In this part of the Neurocomputers and Deep Learning course related to biological and artificial neurons, we will cover characteristics of the basic artificial neuron model called McClock and Pitts model, and how to implement logic gates using this model. Artificial Neuron Model As it is mentioned in the previous section, the transmission of a signal from one neuron to another through synapses is a complex chemical process in which specific transmitter substances are released from the sending side of the junction. The effect is to raise or lower the electrical potential inside the body of the receiving cell. If this potential reaches a threshold, the neuron fires. It is this characteristic that the artificial neuron model proposed by McClock and Pitts attempt to reproduce. This is the model of the artificial neuron. The neuron model shown above is the one that is widely used in artificial neural networks with some minor modifications on it. It has N inputs noted as U1, U2, Uj up to Un. Each line connecting these inputs to the neuron is assigned a weight, which are denoted as W1, W2, Wj up to Wn, respectively. Weights in the artificial model corresponds to the synaptic connections in biological neurons. Theta, shown here, represent threshold in artificial neuron. The inputs and the weights are real values. These are real values. Theta is also real value. The activation is given by the formula. Activation is equal to summation j starting from 1 up to n, wj multiplied by uj plus theta. A negative value for a weight indicates an inhibitor connection, while a positive value indicates an excitator one. Although in biological neurons, theta has a negative value, it may be assigned a positive value, in artificial neuron models. If theta is positive, it is usually referred as bias. For mathematical convenience, we will use plus sign in the activation formula. However, internal value of the theta itself can be negative or positive. It's a real value. Sometimes the threshold is combined for simplicity into the summation part by assuming an imaginary input U0 have a value plus one and a connection weight, W0, equal to theta. Hence, the activation formula becomes J starting from 0 up to N, WJ, UJ. Here, when J is equal to 0, notice that UJ, U0, is equal to 1, as given here, and W0 is equal to theta. The vector notation, activation equal to Weight vector transpose multiplied by u plus theta. If the size of the weight vector is n, so we are constant the connections from 1 to n. In that case, we are adding theta. However, if we are constant the vector having also w0 value and u0 value here having size n plus 1, in that case, theta is omitted here. This vector notation is useful for expressing the activation for a neuron. Here the j element of the input vector u is shown as uj, and the j element of the weight vector of w is noted as wj. Both of these vectors are of size n. Notice that wtu is the inner product of two vectors w and u resulting in a scalar Value. The inner product is an operation defined on equal sized vectors. In the case these vectors have unit length, the inner product is a measure of similarity of these vectors. The output value of the neuron is a function of its activation in an analogy to the firing frequency of the biological neurons. That is, x, this is the output, is a function of the activation. Originally, the neuron output function FA in McClough-Pitts model proposed as threshold function. 
However, linear, ramp, and sigmoid functions are also widely used output functions. These are some neuron output functions. This is the threshold function. This one is ramp function, sigmoid function, and Gaussian function. Usually in neural networks, the output function of neurons is preferred to be a monotonically increasing function. For example, sigmoid function, threshold function, and ramp function are all monotonically increasing function. And this is a special case. Here we have Gaussian function, which is used in the radial basis function networks. These are the mathematical representation of these output functions. The linear function is function of the activation is represented as a constant k multiplied by the activation. The threshold function is such that fa is equal to, if the activation is less than equal to zero, the output is zero, otherwise it is one. In the ramp function, if the activation is less than equal to zero, then the output is zero. In case activation is greater than a constant k, in that case, output is one. Between zero and k, the value of the a is a divided by k. So at the point k, the value becomes one, and at the point zero, it has a value zero, so this function is a continuous function. For the sigmoid output function, fa is 1 divided by 1 plus exponential minus a constant k multiplied by a. So this is the S-shaped sigmoid function. And also we have tangent hyperbolic function, which is sigmoid function multiplied by 2 and shifted down by 1. The sigmoid function is change in value between 0 and 1, while tangent hyperbolic has value between minus 1 and 0. It is starting with minus 1 and increasing to plus 1 as a goes to infinity. Though its simple structure, McClough Pitts neuron is a powerful computational device. McClough and Pitts proved that. A synchronous assembly of such neurons is capable, in principle, to perform any computation that an ordinary digital computer can, though not necessarily so rapidly or conveniently. Here there is an example. When the threshold function is used as the neuron output function and binary input values 0 and 1 are assumed, the basic Boolean functions and or and not of two variables can be implemented by choosing appropriate weights and threshold values as shown in the following figure. Consider the Boolean function and, or, and not. These are the corresponding logical gates. And these are the implementation of the Boolean functions by artificial neuron. For end operation, we have the formula x is this is the output equal to the input 1 ended with input 2. The logical gate is this one. This is the end gate. We have inputs u1 and u2. At the output, we have x. The end function can be implemented by using artificial neuron such that u1 and u2 are the inputs. Their value is either 0 or 1. And here u0 is set to 1 and threshold is equal to minus 1.5. When both inputs are 0, 0 multiplied by 1 plus 0 multiplied by 1 is equal to 0 and minus 1.5 makes totally minus 1.5. So the result is less than zero, the output will be zero by using the threshold function. If one of them is one, one multiplied by one is equal to one, the other one is zero, then plus zero, we have totally one. We subtract 1.5, it is 
minus 0 0.5, which is less than 0. So for the threshold logic function, the output is 0. If both are 1, in that case, 1 multiplied by 1 plus 1 times 1 is equal to 2 minus 1.5, 1, 1 multiplied minus 1.5. So the summation by constant all the connections and inputs, we will have plus 0 0.5, which is greater than 0, so the output will be 1. So that means that only when u1 and u2 are 1, the output is 1. In all the other cases, the output is 0. For the OR gate, the representation is u1 or u2. This is the symbol used for the OR gate. The output is x. And here it is the same as the implementation of the AND gate. But the only difference is that here as the threshold, we have minus 0 0.5. That means that when both inputs are 0, then the summation for this part is 0 times 1 plus 0 times 1 is equal to 0 minus 0 0.5. So it is less than 0, output is 0. When both are 0, output is 0. However, if one of them is equal to 1, 1 times 1 is 1. Then if this is 0 plus 0 is equal to 1, and minus 0 0.5 makes plus 0 0.5. Because it is greater than 0, the output will be 1. And also, if we consider the case, both u1 and u2 are 1, this summation becomes 2 minus 0 0.5 makes 1.5. It is greater than 0, so the output is 1. When u1 or u2 is 1, or if both of them are 1, the output is 1 only if u1 and u2 both are 0, the output will be 0. This is corresponding to the logical OR operation. For the NOT operation, the output is the inverse of the input. If input is 0, the output will be 1. And if the input is 1, the output will be 0. This is the implementation here. There is a connection from U2, given here, or it may be U1. And we have connection weight as minus 1. And we have a constant input. This is corresponding to U0, which has value of plus 1. And the threshold is plus 0 0.5. If this is 0 multiplied by minus 1, it becomes 0 and plus 0 0.5, it makes 0 0.5, so it is greater than 0, the output is 1. If the input is 1 multiplied by minus 1, it makes minus 1, plus 0 0.5 makes minus 0 0.5, which is less than 0, so the output becomes 0. So this is corresponding to the NAT gate.